I want to wish you all a very good afternoon, and I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Once again, we thank God for God has given us this time that we can come in his presence to worship him, to praise him, and to listen to his word. And I invite you, some of you who are in your homes and some of you who are in your workplace, I invite you to come and join with us to praise God with us and especially to listen to his word. This time we have with us our pastor, Reverend Elling Skor, and he will share to us from the word of God. And we pray that God will bless each and every one of us and especially bless us as we listen to the message that he gave to his servant. Before I give the time to the praise and worship team to lead us in the time of praise, and afterwards, Reverend Elling Skor will take the time to present the word of God. Let us just look to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you to thank you for this beautiful day that you gave us. We want to praise you, Lord, and to glorify your name because you are a good and a great God. Lord, at this time, as we come in your presence, we pray that you'll be with us. Bless each and every one of us, those who are in their workplace, those who are in, at homes. We pray, Lord, you will bless them as they join with us, as their hearts join with us to praise you, and as they listen to your word. And I pray, Lord, you will bless your, your servant this time, who will give to us and share to us from your word. For all these we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh 
I bring greetings to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. To all of you who are watching our online worship service through the YouTube channel of the Pokset Presbyterian Church. And I greet all of you in the matchless name and most powerful name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, my sermon will be from the two books of the Old Testament of our Bible. And I will be speaking from the book of Ezra and Nehemiah about these two great men of God, Ezra and Nehemiah, who were contemporaries, who worked together for the rebuilding of the temple and the walls of Jerusalem. And so my theme for my sermon will be about rebuilding, rebuilding and I will be highlighting and focusing on these two important aspects in your life that you desperately need to rebuild in your personal life in such a time as this. And before we proceed to my sermon, let us first look at the background of the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. So the Bible tells us that the Jews were taken captive as slaves into the 70 years exile into Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar in the year 606 BC as a result and as a punishment to sin, idolatry, and disobedience to the Holy God, Lord Almighty. And so King Nebuchadnezzar, he took spoils of war and carried away all the precious articles belonging to the temple of the Lord to Babylon. And as we can see, after a gap of 70 years, in the year 559 BC, King Darius I of Persia came and conquered Babylon. And when he conquered Babylon, and under the Persian Empire, the Jews were able to return to their homeland. So when we look at the Bible, the return journey of the Jews to their homeland, to Jerusalem, under the Persian Empire, constituted in three batches, which were under the leadership of four men of God. The first batch was led under Zerubbabel and Jeshua in the year 538 BC under the reign of King Cyrus. And the Bible tells us that King Cyrus in his first year gave a degree and he gave the permission that the temples should be rebuilt in Jerusalem, which is written in Ezra chapter one and six. So King Cyrus brought back all the articles belonging to the temple of God back to Jerusalem, and in his tenure, in his reign, the work of rebuilding the temple started. But after the death of King Cyrus, the work was stopped. So the second batch that came to Jerusalem was under the leadership of Ezra, 
after a gap of about 57 years in the year 458 BC. And Ezra took charge. He resumed the pending work for rebuilding the temple. And it was completed during the reign of King Darius II. And last, the third batch was under the leadership of Nehemiah, who came after 12 years gap in the year 444 BC under the reign of King Artaxerxes of Persia, where Nehemiah and the Jews were able to build the walls of Jerusalem. This is the short background which I'm just highlighting to all of you at this time. It has come to the main part of my sermon. And so the first part that I will be speaking of will be about the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. The rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. Allow me to read a portion related to the first part of my sermon. I'll be reading Ezra chapter 9, verse 9. It says like this, Though we are slaves, our God has not deserted us in our bondage. He has shown us kindness in the sight of the kings of Persia. He has granted us new life to rebuild the house of God and repair its ruins. And has given us a wall of protection in Judah and Jerusalem. To this portion which I've read is a part of the speech of Ezra where he made in front of the people in Jerusalem. And he told them, this is the time for us to come together, to come as a nation, to rebuild the house of God, which is the temple in Jerusalem, which was destroyed many, many years ago. So, as we can see here, the work started under the leadership of Ezra, the scribe. And when the work was going on, the Bible tells us that the enemies of Judah and Benjamin came along. They became furious, envious at the work of rebuilding the temple. They devised a plan to stop the development of the work. But their plans failed because God was with his people. And it was also because of the teamwork of Ezra and the people. The work was done diligently by the surviving returnees, the family heads, priests, and Levites. Some helped with the stones. Some helped with the timbers in building the war. And others helped by bringing out gold and silver, goods and livestock. And some even brought free will offerings for the temple of God in Jerusalem, which was to be built. And when we read Ezra chapter 6, it tells us of the completion of the construction or the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem, which was roughly after about 47 long years. And as we can see here, it was indeed a very happy and a joyous occasion after the temple was rebuilt. And when we read Ezra chapter 6, it tells us that a dedication ceremony was held and the Passover was celebrated after a gap of many, many decades. Dear friends, as we are pondering on the theme about rebuilding the temple, I would like at this time that our talk and our focus will be on the rebuilding of the temple in your life. Rebuilding the temple in your life. 
or rebuilding your faith. First and foremost, we have to thank the Lord God Almighty for his presence, protection, and provisions for all of us during this entire year. And as we all know, we are exper experiencing these hardships and difficulties through the pandemic of the COVID-19 virus. But we are here to thank God that in spite of all these happenings around the world, God has been with us. We can see these many changes going on around the world today. So my friends, as we are looking into the changes around the world, I feel this is the right time that we should not look here and there, but we should look into ourselves, our spiritual lives. And I wish at this moment that we will ask ourselves, what is the health and state of my spiritual life? Because I believe as Christians, we neglect this very important part of our faith, and that is rebuilding our faith in the Lord God Almighty. This is my prayer at this moment, that we will take a moment of self-introspection. We will look into ourselves and ask about our relationship in Jesus Christ. I believe many of us, we are struggling under the bondage of sin. And this has drifted us afar from the presence of God. But this is the right moment for all of us to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He has died for all of us on the cross. And he is ready that if we repent, he will wash away our sins and give us eternal life. So I urge all of you to come to Jesus Christ. Let us worship him. Let us serve him. Let us renew our commitment and our relationship with him in such a time as this. We cannot deny that we are living in the last days. And as we await the second coming of Jesus Christ, we should make sure that we should be ready to give an account of our lives when Jesus comes again. And as we are rebuilding the temple in our lives, it has also rebuilt our churches, our places of worship. I believe all of us, we long and we wish that normal services would resume around the world. And as we await the resuming of our normal and regular worship services every Sunday in our respective churches. Let us take this time to pray for our churches. Let us be the left hand and right hand of our church. We can serve our church even in the midst of the pandemic, even in the midst of the post-lockdown days. We can also take this time to think and to ponder about rebuilding house churches. Let us take this time. And as we are here to ponder on this point, let us revive our house churches, our family worships and devotions. And as we do that, I believe that is the wish, that is the will of God, that we can come to his presence. We can rebuild ourselves, our families, and tune ourselves in the right frequency with the Lord God Almighty. Let us now look into my second part of the sermon, the rebuilding of the walls in Jerusalem. The rebuilding of the walls in Jerusalem Allow me to read Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17, which says like this. Then I said to them, you see the trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been burned with fire. 
come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace. So in this verse, we can see Nehemiah spoke to the people. He said, look, we have seen the ruins of Jerusalem, but now is the time that we should come together and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem that we will no longer be in disgrace. And the Bible tells us that under the leadership of Nehemiah, who was only a sole cup bearer in the palace of King Arta Zerzis of Persia. But as a man of God, he had this great vision. He prayed to the Lord God Almighty and under his leadership, he brought the people to come out together and to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. So when the walk started, opposition came, as it is written in Nehemiah chapter 2, chapter 4 and 6, that these certain people, Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the men of Ashdod came and conspired to fight against the people of God. But through their teamwork, through the teamwork of the Jews and through God's protection, the enemies were not able to stop the development of the work. So when we read Nehemiah chapter 4, it tells us that all worked together. Half of the men did the work, while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and arrows. And some stood behind the people and they guarded all the workers. Those who carried the materials did their work with one hand, and on the other hand, they held a weapon to protect themselves from their enemies. So after a brief work with much consistency, in after 52 days, as stated in Nehemiah chapter 6, the work was done. The rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem was completed. So when the wall was completed, it was a happy and a joyous occasion to everyone. Ezra the scribe came and he read the law of God in front of the people. And when the people heard the word of God, revival came in. They confessed their sins and renewed their commitments to the Lord God Almighty that they will serve him and only him alone. Nehemiah chapter 12 tells us that the, the, the wall of Jerusalem was dedicated by the Levites and they came out joyfully, which was followed with batches of songs and music of praises and thanksgiving. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, and as we are pondering on the second part of my sermon, the rebuilding of the walls in Jerusalem, let us take this moment to ponder and to talk about and to think about rebuilding your life. Rebuilding your life. And when we, when we look and when we read the news on television, in our newspapers, in the internet, we cannot deny the fact that this year has been a very bad year for the mighty and powerful countries around the world. Many of these great countries with excellent and healthy economies have collapsed and made to face recession because of the lockdown. And many are still struggling to rebuild their economies in such a time as this. My dear friends, when we introspect ourselves, I believe many of us, we are also facing the same difficulty with the collapsing of our lives. I believe from time to time, our life has always been in ruins. We are in dire straits because of the manifold problems and issues in our lives that we face day and day out. 
and through this pandemic and the lockdown. To you who are in your studies, your studies have been halted. To you who are in your work, businesses and your jobs, it might have collapsed because of the pandemic. But we are here to rebuild everything. We are also here to rebuild not only our lives, our careers, but also our families and our relationships. And as we are rebuilding everything, let us not be afraid of doing it because God has promised that he will be with all of us. Let us not be afraid of our future because God alone has our future in his hands. God alone can help us to rebuild ourselves, our lives, our family, our careers, and the promises that we are to read and which is to be found in the word of God. The promises of God stand forever. When we read Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, the Apostle Paul, the mighty servant of God, said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So this is a call for all of us. And as we rebuild everything in such a time as this around the world, let us rebuild along with Jesus. He alone can give us the strength, and without him, we can do nothing. Come, let us rebuild ourselves. Let us rebuild our faith. Let us rebuild our churches, our families, our relationships, so we will no longer be in disgrace. May the Lord add his blessings through his word. For the glory of God, amen. Let us look the Lord in prayer. Gracious Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Father, that you have spoken through your mighty and most powerful word. We pray that you'll bless us through your word and, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, you will seal with your mighty hand. And may the seed that has been sown at this time, may it grow 30, 50, 80, and 100 fold. And we pray that you'll bless our dear brothers and sisters, O oh Lord, who are watching this channel. You know their problems, you know the issues in life, you know them by their names. And we know it is your wish that they should turn to you, they should repent, and they should serve you in the remaining days to come. Help us, O oh Lord, for we ask in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear friends and my dear brothers and sisters, before we end this worship service at this point of time, I stand here on behalf of the Poxe Presbyterian Church just to bring to your notice that we, the church leaders, we are ready to come to you and to give you a helping hand or a support in the form of prayer and counseling. If you are staying in and around Pokse, if you are here in Shillong, we request you that if you are facing problems or issues in your life, you can contact us and we can come and counsel and have a time of prayer with you. We also have our counseling committee, which comprises of pastors, elders, deacons, women, and youths. So we can come anytime to help you out with your present needs. So please contact us through these numbers given below. You can call us, you can text us, or you can message us through 
WhatsApp. So if you wish to send us an email, kindly log in into our website, www.boxepresbyterianchurch.in. So you can click on the link and you can send us an email there. And we promise that we will get back to you after we have received your message. May God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Let us receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, may the love of God the Father Almighty, and may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may these three and the blessings that will come from our Trinitarian God rest, abide, and follow with each and every one of us and your dear servants of the world now and forevermore. Amen.